Ever since I can remember, there's been a part of me fascinated by the world of drag. The colors, the glamour, the transformation, it all seemed like magic. But living in a small town with narrow views, I never dared to explore this curiosity. It was like a secret garden in my mind, locked away, with me peering through the cracks in the gate. One night, though, something changed. Maybe it was the monotony of my daily routine or the constant nagging of that secret desire, but I felt a surge of bravery, or perhaps recklessness. I decided to sneak into the dressing room of the local drag club, the Glitter Palace, a place rumored to be the beating heart of drag culture in our town. The club was located in an alley, its entrance lit by a single flickering neon sign. My heart pounded as I approached, each step feeling like a leap into the unknown. I lingered outside, watching the bouncers and patrons laughing and smoking, their lives seemingly so different from mine. Finding a side door slightly ajar, I slipped inside, my heart racing. The corridor was dimly lit, pulsing with the muffled beats of music from the main hall. Posters of famous drag queens adorned the walls, their eyes following me as I tiptoed along the hallway. I finally reached the dressing room door, its cracked paint and worn handle whispering stories of countless performances and transformations. Pushing it open, I stepped into a world I had only dreamed of. The room was a kaleidoscope of costumes, wigs, and makeup. Mirrors lined the walls, reflecting the bright lights and the few queens preparing for the night's show. Hiding behind a rack of feather boas and sequined gowns, I watched in awe. The air was thick with the scent of perfume and hairspray, and the queens moved with a grace and confidence that left me spellbound. I was so engrossed in this new world that I barely noticed the footsteps approaching until it was too late. My adventure had just begun, and already I was caught. But little did I know, this was the start of a journey that would change me forever. As I stood frozen behind the rack of costumes, my heart skipped a beat when a voice, both amused and commanding, broke the silence. Well, well, what do we have here? A tall figure emerged from the shadows, her makeup flawless and her gown sparkling under the dressing room lights. She was a vision of the drag world I had only admired from afar. Before I could stammer out an explanation, I was surrounded by a flurry of queens, each more vibrant than the last. They examined me with a mix of curiosity and excitement, as if I were an unexpected gift they were eager to unwrap. "'Honey, you've stumbled into the lioness's den,' one of them said with a wink. The fear I felt was palpable, but it was mingled with an undeniable thrill. I was about to be transformed by the very artisans of the craft I had secretly admired. Their hands were swift and skilled. The first step was waxing." a process that made me wince and gasp as my body became as smooth as the polished mirrors around us. Despite the pain, there was a part of me that felt liberated with each strip they pulled away, as if they were also stripping away my inhibitions and fears. Next came the attire. They laced me into pink lingerie that hugged my newly smooth skin, and as I looked down at the fishnet stockings climbing up my legs, a strange sense of excitement bubbled within me. The tightness of the corset they fastened around my waist forced the air from my lungs and sculpted my torso into a curvaceous silhouette, alien yet fascinating to my own eyes. But it was the makeup that truly transformed me. I sat almost in a trance as they painted my face. Foundation concealed my flaws, and contours chiseled my face into a sharper, more feminine shape. Eyebrows arched high, eyeshadows in shades of pink and glitter, and eyeliner that winged out boldly, all elements that reshaped not just my face, but my identity. The lashes they applied were heavy, making my eyes feel like they could command the room with just a glance. My lips, plumped and painted, were no longer my own, but belonged to this new persona they were crafting with each brushstroke. When they finally settled a long pink wig onto my head and adjusted it to perfection, I was no longer the person who had sneaked into the club. I was someone else. Someone bold, someone beautiful, someone unrecognizable even to myself. The queens stood back, their work complete, their expressions a mix of pride and triumph. Darling, welcome to your new world, one of them said, her voice soft yet carrying a weight of sincerity and warmth. 
In that moment, staring at my reflection, I was caught in a whirlwind of emotions, fear, exhilaration, confusion, but above all, a deep, unspoken joy. The person in the mirror was me, but it was also someone I had never dared to be. I was transformed, not just on the outside, but somewhere deep within. Standing before the mirror, the transformation complete, a storm of emotions raged within me. At first, fear had its grip tightly wound around my heart. The reflection staring back seemed like a stranger's. Beautiful, but unfamiliar. The initial impulse was to run, to escape this reality that felt both exhilarating and terrifying. The thought of stepping out into the world like this made my stomach churn. What would people say? How would I face the judgment, the stares, the whispers? But as I continued to gaze at my reflection, something shifted. The fear slowly ebbed, like the receding tide, revealing the shores of a new land. My curiosity. This curiosity, once a tiny flame, now ignited into a blazing fire. I was captivated by the person in the mirror. The artistry, the details, the transformation. It was all so overwhelming yet mesmerizing. My eyes, once dull with apprehension, now sparkled with a mix of wonder and recognition. The fear that had initially clouded my vision began to clear, and in its place a sense of appreciation took root. I marveled at the contours of my face, the arch of the brows, the boldness of the lips. Each element was a brushstroke in a masterpiece, and collectively they painted a picture of someone who was both me and not me. It was as if I was meeting myself for the first time, seeing what I could become with a bit of courage and a lot of glitter. The queens around me were a chorus of support and admiration, their words like music that fueled my burgeoning confidence. You look fabulous, darling, they cooed, their eyes gleaming with pride. Their acceptance was a warm embrace, enveloping me in a world I had longed to understand and be part of. As I stood there, the initial fear and desire to flee transformed into a sense of belonging and self-acceptance, the emotional roller coaster I had been on since sneaking into this club had brought me to a peak I never anticipated reaching. The person in the mirror was still me, but a version of me that I had never allowed myself to explore. This revelation was both a shock and a solace. In this room, surrounded by the opulence of drag and the genuine warmth of the queens, I found a strange peace. The fear had not completely vanished, but it was no longer the dominant force. In its place was a burgeoning sense of self-appreciation and wonder at the journey of transformation I had undergone. I was no longer just a spectator of the drag world. I was now a part of it, in my own small but significant way. Standing before the mirror, my heart pounding in my chest, I braced myself to confront the stranger reflected there. The transformation was complete, and the time had come to face what I had become. As my eyes met the figure in the glass, a surge of emotions overwhelmed me. The person staring back was me, yet not me. The elaborate makeup, the extravagant attire, the commanding presence, it was all so foreign, yet oddly familiar. I took a tentative step closer, my high heels clicking on the tiled floor, echoing in the suddenly silent room. The queens, sensing the gravity of the moment, watched in respectful silence. My initial impulse was to turn away, to deny this bizarre reflection of my identity. But a strange fascination held my gaze. The fear that had gnawed at me, the desire to flee, began to ebb, replaced by a burgeoning curiosity. How could this be me? This confident, radiant creature with eyes sparkling with daring and lips curved in a mischievous smile. I reached out, my fingers trembling, to touch the mirror half expecting my hand to pass through into another world. But the cool glass was solid, grounding me in the reality of my transformation. The person in the mirror mimicked my movements, a perfect, flamboyant echo of my inner turmoil and wonder. As minutes stretched on, the initial shock faded, giving way to a profound sense of recognition. This wasn't just a costume, a mask to hide behind. It was a revelation of a part of me long suppressed, unacknowledged even in my deepest, most secret thoughts. A smile broke across my face, mirrored by my reflection. It was a smile of acceptance, of joy in the discovery of this new aspect of myself. The fear that had once threatened to engulf me was now just a shadow, 
overpowered by the light of self-appreciation and understanding. The queens around me erupted into cheers and applause, their earlier amusement transformed into genuine admiration and support. Honey, you are fabulous, one exclaimed, and I felt a warm flush of pride swell within me. This was more than just putting on a dress or makeup. It was a shedding of old skin, a breaking free from the confines of my previous existence. I was not just accepting the person in the mirror, I was embracing a part of my soul that had been waiting to shine. In that dressing room, surrounded by feathers and sequins, under the watchful eyes of my newfound mentors, I found a piece of myself that I never knew was lost. The journey was not just about stepping into the world of drag, it was about stepping into a fuller version of myself, one that I had never dared to explore. As I stood there, basking in the glow of acceptance and revelation, I knew that my life would never be the same again. I had crossed a threshold, not just into the world of drag, but into a deeper understanding of who I am and who I could be. The air was electric with anticipation as the moment for my debut approached. Standing backstage, surrounded by the dazzling array of costumes and the comforting scent of makeup, I felt a mix of nerves and exhilaration. The queens, my newfound sisters, fussed around me, adding final touches to my outfit and makeup, their faces beaming with pride. Candy sucks a lot, you're up next, the stage manager announced, her voice a blend of excitement and authority. My heart skipped a beat. That was me, Candy sucks a lot. The name chosen by the queens in a burst of laughter and creativity now felt like a badge of honor, a symbol of my transformation. As I made my way to the stage, the thumping of my heart matched the pulsing rhythm of the music. The queens gave me encouraging smiles and thumbs up, their eyes twinkling with mischief and support. You've got this, girl, one whispered, her words a lifeline in my swirling sea of emotions. Stepping onto the stage, the bright lights blinded me for a moment, and I heard the crowd's roar, a distant surging ocean of sound. Then, as my eyes adjusted, the world came into sharp focus, the glittering eyes of the audience, the sea of faces, the spotlight that felt like a sun warming my skin. With the first beat of the music, something magical happened. The fear and hesitation melted away, leaving only the pure, exhilarating freedom of being Candy sucks a lot. Each step, each move, felt like a declaration of my new identity, a celebration of the journey that had brought me here. Dancing, twirling, and lip-syncing to the music, I was no longer the timid soul who had sneaked into the club. I was a queen, bold and beautiful, commanding the stage with an energy I never knew I had. The crowd cheered, their applause a thunderous wave of approval and admiration. As the performance continued, I connected with every individual in the audience, sharing my story through every gesture and expression. The joy of performing, of being seen and celebrated for who I was, filled me with a profound sense of belonging and achievement. When the final notes of the song faded and the applause swelled to a crescendo, I stood there, basking in the adulation, feeling tears of happiness and triumph welling up. The queens rushed to the stage, enveloping me in a group hug, their laughter and cheers mingling with the continuing applause from the audience. In that moment, I was no longer an outsider. I was Candy Sukalot, a name that would now forever symbolize my courage, my transformation, and my acceptance into the vibrant, loving family of the drag community. The journey from curiosity to fear, to self-appreciation and acceptance, had culminated in this triumphant debut, marking my complete metamorphosis into a celebrated member of the drag world. The air backstage was electric with anticipation as the night of my debut approached. The queens, now my sisters in arms, were buzzing around, adding finishing touches to their outfits and makeup. Amidst the chaos, I stood, my heart a veritable drumline of nerves and excitement, fully embodying my new persona, Candy sucks a lot. As the moment to step onto the stage drew near, I could feel the weight of the transformation that had led me here. No longer just an observer of the drag world, I was about to become a part of its pulsating heart. The cheers and music from the audience seeped through the curtains, each beat a call to the person I had become. 
Then, amidst the whirlwind of emotions and preparations, I saw a familiar face in the crowd. My breath hitched. It was someone from my past life, someone who knew the person I used to be, not the persona I had become. Their eyes locked onto mine, a flash of recognition passing between us. This unexpected encounter sent a ripple through the newfound confidence I had been nurturing. Doubt whispered in my ear, a sinister contrast to the thumping bass of the club. Could I really step out and reveal my new identity, not just to the world, but to someone who knew the old me? Would they accept this part of me, or would it shatter their perception and, in turn, my own self-assurance? The moment of conflict was brief but intense, a crucible that threatened to undo the acceptance and self-love I had found. But then, amidst the turmoil, a deeper realization dawned on me. This journey, this transformation into Candy Suxalot, wasn't just about acceptance from the world, it was about self-acceptance. With a deep breath, I squared my shoulders, the persona of Candy Suxalot wrapping around me like a protective cloak. I stepped forward, not just to the stage, but towards a moment of truth. The spotlight hit, the music soared, and I, Candy Suzalot, burst forth, a phoenix from the ashes of my former self. The performance was a blur of lights, music, and adoration. The audience was a sea of faces, but my eyes kept searching for that one familiar face from my past. In the end, it didn't matter whether they accepted me or not. What mattered was that I had embraced who I truly was, the twist of fate that brought a figure from my past into the present didn't derail me. It fortified me. It was a testament to the journey I had undertaken from the shadows of curiosity into the dazzling light of self-realization and acceptance. As the final notes of the music faded and the applause thundered through the club, I, now fully Candy Suxalot, stood center stage, basking in the adulation. The journey from the curious onlooker who sneaked into the dressing room to the drag queen reveling in the spotlight was complete. The fear and uncertainty that once shadowed my steps were gone, replaced by a fierce confidence and a sense of belonging. In the whirlwind of cheers and flashing lights, I saw not just fans or strangers, but a community, a family, that had welcomed me with open arms. The drag queens, once towering figures of my secret admiration, were now my sisters, mentors, and friends. Together, we celebrated not just the end of a show, but the beginning of a new chapter in my life. The encounter with someone from my past, instead of being a moment of dread, became a bridge between my two worlds. It was a powerful reminder that I hadn't left my old self behind, but had integrated it into a fuller, more authentic version of me. Candy Suxalot was not just an alter ego, she was the embodiment of my courage, my desires, and my dreams. In the days and weeks that followed, my story became a beacon for others like me, those curious, searching souls standing at the threshold of their own transformations. Sharing my journey with all its fears, challenges, and triumphs, I helped others find the courage to explore their identities, to step into their own spotlights. The dressing room, once a place of secretive entry, became a space of open doors and welcoming lights. It was here I counseled and encouraged newcomers, sharing not just tips on makeup and performance, but also offering support and understanding for the emotional odyssey of self-discovery. My life as Candy Suxalot became a vibrant tapestry of performances, friendships, and advocacy. Each night on stage was not just a show, but a testament to the power of embracing one's true self. Off stage, my existence was a continuous journey of learning, loving, and inspiring. In the end, the resolution of my story was not just about acceptance from others, but about self-acceptance. Embracing my identity as Candy sucks a lot. I found not only joy and a sense of belonging in the drag community, but also a purpose in using my experience to light the path for others on similar journeys. My transformation, once hidden behind curtains of doubt and fear, was now the highlight of my narrative, a dazzling display of the beauty and strength that comes from embracing who you truly are. In the grand theater of life, I had found my stage, my audience, and most importantly, myself.